What if we could reach back into the past and wave a magic wand to make the old games we grew up playing look good again? Well, thanks to some brand new, incredibly powerful tools and dedicated modders, we're getting a taste of what might become a major wave of relatively easy to make remasters. This is the original Max Payne released way back in 2001. And despite being 23 years old, it's still enjoyable to play, mostly thanks to the innovative storytelling and addictive gameplay and impressive sound design. Graphically though, it requires you to uh, stretch your imagination a little, but not anymore thanks to this incredible mod that was made in a short period of time. Today we're taking a look at the Max Payne RTX mod created by Slask Cybunker, and they put this together using RTX Remix, which is Nvidia's upcoming software tools that let you take classic titles and literally just hit the RTX on button. Now these tools are so new that they're actually not even available to the general public yet. There's just some dev tools out right now. The full public release comes on the 22nd of this month, so you'll have to wait until then if you want to tinker with them. But even with the released part of the software for the devs, modders have gone to town. There's also a pretty impressive mod for the original Call of Duty 4 and now this mod for Max Payne. Now, in a nutshell, this isn't truly a proper ray tracing remaster of Max Payne, not like the Quake 2 RTX release that Nvidia did back in 2019, but it's not that far off either. It lets you capture the render data and assets from a scene in a game and then apply both path tracing and other ray traced effects to enhance the visuals. You can also swap out the textures and assets for the ones that support more advanced rendering techniques to create an even more convincing effect. So what you're looking at ends up being kind of like a filter running over Max Payne's original graphics, but with tons of custom tweaks and assets. Now this mod only covers the first part of the game, so once you leave the subway, everything pretty much falls apart. But there's nothing stopping modders from redoing the entire game with these tools aside from, well, you know, the time that it would take to do that. Now, looking closely, you can tell that this approach just isn't perfect compared to a full reimagining. Lighting effects are typically baked into textures of older games like Max Payne, and you can see evidence of this stuff in these electrical panel boxes and some of the walls here in the bank vaults. The original artist baked these light reflections and gradients into the textures to give the appearance of light interacting with them more realistically. So while they look convincing from a static position, when you start to move around, the illusion can start to break. If the reflections were more accurate here, they would move as you move around the object. RTX Remix can place actual reflections over these objects that move properly and approximate their surface material so that you do get the convincing light reflections and shading. But a proper remaster of the game from the ground up would require some of these textures to be hand tweaked to not have the baked in lighting and baked in reflections. And that might not be that hard, it just requires modders to actually go through and see which materials look a little bit funky. Now that said, some textures and assets look incredible with RTX Remix applied. Max Payne's jacket has a convincing sheen to it that reacts with the environmental lighting. The walls of the subway station have an amazing looking texture that also reflects light properly, giving every nook and cranny in their bumpy surfaces a real sense of grime and depth. The opening scene in Max Payne's house is also presented with a much darker and foreboding look that gives the whole sequence more emotional weight than the original presentation. When Max says the station was drenched in gloom as he exits the train, you really feel the gloom with the RTX mod. By comparison, the original graphics look so bright and flat that the gloom really doesn't feel like that accurate of a description. Now, because of the nature of this mod, a lot of textures and assets simply can't be rendered properly. RTX Remix is just taking snapshots of rendered frames and letting modders work with the captured data. So anything not captured won't integrate properly, and obviously a lot of bug fixing has to happen when you're replacing the entire rendering system for a game. So you'll notice stuff like flickering or blocky textures. There's also issues with the RTX lighting being based on what the original game rendered. So lights pop in as you get closer. But even with the current limitations, it's insane what modders have accomplished. And there's also no telling where the limits of RTX Remix will fall when the full tools launch as the Nvidia demo has shown off some incredible Remix potential. All of this new tech kind of makes me think back to Nvidia's original pitch for the RTX 2000 series GPU launch. They called ray tracing the future of gaming and their hardware was at the bleeding edge of the possibility. This was back in 2018, but those 20 series GPUs could barely run 
in games at an acceptable frame rate with ray tracing enabled. DLSS was still a far cry from its current quality and there was pretty much like two games that even supported this new tech. It's really only happened in the past few years that people have been able to start enjoying ray tracing with AAA games finally achieving decent frame rate. For me, going back to play Battlefield 5 with my 40 series GPU was a real treat. Playing at 4K resolutions over 100 FPS with ray tracing set to the max, the game just looked insane. It started to sing. And this was one of the games that came out with the 20 series cards that was supposed to show off the cool RTX visuals, but the actual hardware needed to run it just wasn't quite there yet. And the software, frankly, has gone through a lot of improvements. Now that technology is here and we have games like Cyberpunk just showing how far it can actually be pushed. But imagine if RTX Remix were available back in 2018. Suddenly a massive back catalog of iconic games spanning decades would have gotten a massive bump in visual fidelity that anyone could apply to their favorite titles. This very much seems like the tech that was meant to launch with those cards, but understandably it couldn't as it's heavily reliant on all the software progress that Nvidia has made since then. Certainly it's better late than never, and I really can't overstate just how insane this tech is going to be. There's so many games like Max Payne that are outright legendary, but just haven't aged well when it comes to the visual presentation. Instead of hoping and wishing for developers to go back and remake or remaster their legacy titles, we could just be a year or two away from being able to click a button and your favorite childhood game suddenly looks like a modern AAA title. Similarly to, say, toggling the graphics mode in the Halo Master Chief Collection or the Diablo 2 Remaster, but for any game. I think it would be interesting to see how Remedy's official remakes of Max Payne 1 and 2 stack up to what the community achieves with RTX Remix. Now, of course, graphics aren't everything. Modders have been tweaking the original Max Payne for years with stuff like Kung Fu Combat, FPS mods, and more. Playing Max Payne as an FPS with RTX on was an absolute trip. And while I wouldn't say that making this game into an FPS is necessarily the right way to modernize the gameplay, I could definitely see the renewed interest in modding some of these old games as well from a gameplay perspective. Now, of course, to do a proper remix upgrade, the visuals have to be handled with some care. You can't just turn something on and expect it to look like the original visual presentation or the original artistic vision. This problem is similar to playing, say, old retro games on modern displays. There's a ton of retro games that look objectively worse when played on modern displays because they just don't have the subtle blurring and other effects inherent to a CRT. The result is pixel art that looks jagged, backgrounds and features that have lots of artifacts and even subtle stuff like color gradients turning into harsh stripes of color. To make older games look good on modern displays and high resolutions, you kind of have to rebuild a lot of those assets with the modern displays in mind. I'd be curious to know what you guys think about this RTX Remix technology and what old games that you would want to see get the Remix treatment. I think it's truly awesome and I bet even developers of current titles will be able to take advantage of some of these tools to say upscale some textures that they're working on or something along those lines. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give me a like, hit that subscribe button to see more content like this and ding that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And next up check out this insane Zelda Ocarina of Time fan remake in the Unreal 5 engine. It's truly a masterpiece and a crazy project for a single dev. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.